What's going on everyone, it's your boy Yaks KHZFM here and today we're doing another episode of the Manchester United uh, Football Manager Career Mode. So, um, in the last episode we uh, put in a couple of bids for a couple of players, uh, we sold Nemanja Matic and uh, we, we beat Krasnodar in the friendly tournament. So uh, in this episode I just want to, you know, get further in the tournament, you know, uh, get some couple, get a couple of players and hopefully find our replacement for Nemanja Matic and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, you know, get a general gist of what's going on in training and stuff and just, you know, just further implement my tactics onto the squad. So yeah, let's get straight to it. Alright, so we're back and uh, let's see the kind of recommend uh, recommendations that we've got from our scouts. So uh, we've got Joris Nyagan. Um, he's alright, but uh, he's a centre back and I'm not really looking to bring one in. Sergio Rico, don't need a goalkeeper. Kapu, um, he was someone I was looking at as a backup midfielder for whoever we get in. But uh, I just think, you know, I'd, I'll, I'll acknowledge him at this point. I don't think I would go in for him. Uh, Delaney, he's someone that I was actually looking at as, as a replacement for Nemanja Matic. Um, I think, you know, he's 27, he's got a couple of years left in him. He's a good price, he's got experience, he's playing at a good level, so I will actually add him to the shortlist and uh, keep scouting him, actually. Okay, so we've got Rodrigo. Um, he's a striker, I rate him, but he's not the kind of player I'm looking at at this point in time. Uh, again, another centre-back from Nicholas Stark. Um, he's probably got a lot of potential, but you know we're not look really looking to bring in a centre-back. Jibril Sidibe, another one, not really looking into bringing a fullback at this point in time. And who is this? Jakob Bijol, never heard of him in my life. Um, don't know what he's about. He could be a little hidden gem, so I'll keep scouting him. Uh, Jalen Sancho, so obviously this is, you know, this is a player which I think, you know, it should be signing in real life. I think he'd be quality for us in real life and in the game. Um, I will add him to the shortlist, but with given the current budget, which is only 58 million, and we have to get in a replacement for Nemanja Matic in that central defensive midfielder role, um, I don't know if we'll be able to get him in this transfer window. But you, you know, stuff can happen. So I add shortlist, and I'll keep scouting him. But yeah, he's definitely one that I want to bring in. And here's one, Chiro Mobile. So um. I really rate this guy. I really rate him. I think he's a very underrated striker and he's quality. But again, I would be I would be tempted to bring in a striker of his, you know, of his quality and his kind of the way he plays the game. But at this point in time, given how much he would cost, I don't think I would uh, bring him in. Ju Julian Draxler. You see, he's someone that I wasn't actually looking at, but then. He can play on that right wing spot and he can, you know, fill in um, at left wing. So I will, you know, I'll acknowledge, actually, you know, I'll, I'll keep scouting him because I think maybe he'll be, he could be good. A couple of years ago, he was a, right, like, looked at one of the like best prospects in Europe. So uh, let's just, let's see what he can do, maybe. And who's him? Uh, Anthony Ralston. No clue who he is, but he's only had the potential for a sky bet championship player. And you know, we Manchester United, where we should be getting better players than that. Willie Bolly, again, another player I rate, but um, we don't really need a player of his position. Connor Cody, again, um, don't really need a centre back. And Matt Doherty, uh, do not need a centre back again. I mean, full back. So, uh, yeah, this is our training. F um, actually, I want to go into training and uh, chuck in, you know. If I go to, uh, this is, no, I don't, I just go to, yeah, calendar. I just want to chuck in a couple of um, team bonding sessions and community outreach because um, I think the uh, dressing room atmosphere isn't great. So if I just, you know, chuck a couple of these in, hopefully it should improve our teamwork and the actual atmosphere within the dressing room. So community outreach, there we go. That should be enough for now. Okay, so we've got Triore back. So here he is, Adam Triore, as we put in a bid for him in the last episode. Uh, we, we submitted an offer of, of, um, 33 million, 33.5 million, 
Um, and I think, you know what, he's worth it. He's, he's going to be 30 million and Andreas Pereira is going out on loan. And after 20 matches, he will, he will receive 3.6 million. I think it's, you know, it's a good deal. He'll be a great right winger for us. You know, he can fill in that position and, and I think it'd just be great. So I think we're going to, um, you know, bring him into the club. So welcome, um, Adam Motriore. Here we go. Welcome to the club, mate. And here we are. So, uh, obviously he's not at the, he's not at the best level right now, but he's only 23 and he can improve. So I think it'd be great for Adam to the training camp squad. And I'm gonna assign him the number. Oh, you see, you know what? I'll get onto this later because I'm not sure what I'll give him. Uh, I'll add him to the. I, I won't do the squad yet, actually. Uh, I'll ask David De Gea to welcome him, though. So, uh, as vice captain, I'd like to. I'd like you to welcome Adam Mashiro to the club and help him integrate with the squad. Thank you, David. See what you can do. Um, Anthony Alanga. Uh, he scored twice in the under 23 yesterday. Decent, decent. Just a team selection advice for our game against Peterborough. Get onto that later. I do want to look at who's injured though. So if I go to medical centre and uh, injuries. So we've got Eric Baez injured. Adam Traore. What? Oh my god. I'm an idiot. I didn't see that he was injured. Oh my god. Okay, so, um, he's been, he's out injured. Ugh, god. He'll be back in six to eight weeks. It's not the worst, but it's not the best. At least he should be ready for when the season starts. But I actually had no clue that he was injured when we were buying him. Oh, my bad. So it looks like he's not going to get on the pitch for a while. Phil Jones is out for three weeks, and Audrey Nicole is out for two months. Which isn't great, and we already know about Eric Bailly. But God damn it! Oh, it's fine. Adam Ochoa, he'll be a good player, but I can't believe I've been an idiot and I didn't see that. James Garner could be used to the Man United squad. I think while Matic is out, we're gonna have to use him, um, which is good. You know what? I'm all for giving the youth a chance. And here we are, Traore to be um, announced. You know, to be unveiled. So attend the press conference. You sit here alongside new signing Adam Ochoa. Are you pleased that you've got your man? Um, you know, I'm delighted to welcome him to the club. I think, you know what, I'm going to go with I'm happy, but I'm not expecting any immediate fireworks because obviously he is injured and he is good. He is a player that I want to improve. There we go. Are you confident that Traore can produce when it matters in the big games? You know what, I, I, I do. I have the utmost confidence that Adam Traore will come big for the club when needed. Yep. Yeah. He's a big game player. He's strong. He's fast. He, he's got all the attributes that you want. So I think, you know, he'll be a great player in those top, top big games. Okay, now on to our first proper game of the friendly tournament. Um, we are against Peterborough United. So uh, let's go with the, let's go for the team selection. So for this match, I'm thinking, you know what? Uh, Jones has got to go off first of all because he's injured. Which isn't great. Okay, so CDM, you know what? I think James Garner's gonna have to s slot in right there. Um, you know, he, he's he's trying to build match fitness, but there's no one else who can really play that at the moment. I could change my tactics, but I don't really want to at this point in time. Until the squad's a bit more familiar with it, I'm gonna persist with playing with it. Okay, um, we haven't got a lot of options on the bench. It's not great, you know. Uh, let me see if there's anyone else we can bring in. Squad's looking very, very thin at this point in time. Um, let's go to the. Let's go play a couple of youngsters, you know. Uh, um, I'll play a couple of youngsters for this match. So we can bring up from the youth academy. Let's bring up Tahith Chong, you know. We can move to the senior squad. Bring up uh, Angel Gomez. I would have brought a Foster Mensa, but he's injured right now. Um. No, no one really. I could bring up Largi Ramazani. I do rate him, but I think not for this match. And from the under 18s, um, no one at this point in time. I don't think. No. Okay, so let's go uh, back to the back to the um, picking the squad. So let me quickly just chuck in these, you know, these new youngsters I've just picked. 
Alright, so let's do the team sheet. Um, I'm straight up just going to chuck in Tahith Chong. You know what, give him a game. Why not? Uh, Martial can start up top. We'll leave Mason Green on the bench for this one. Bring in, uh, let's go Lindelof and Transabi. Don't think they've played together yet. It'll be, a, be nice to see what they can do together. Um, let's take out, let's take out Luke Shaw for Brandon Williams. Uh, give him a game. And uh, ooh, Angel Gomez, we could uh, play him instead of Rashford. Don't really want to at this point in time. We can bring on Lingard. Uh, ooh, I, you know what? I'm gonna leave him off for this. But I will start Scott McTominay instead of Paul Pogba for this match, and change that to a box-to-box -box midfielder. All right, here we go. So submit the team and. Uh, Let's see how the team do in their first proper friendly match against Peterborough United. Okay, and here's the starting eleven from Peterborough United. So they have uh, Pim in net. They have Beavers, Knight, and Kent as the back three. They have uh, Dan Butler and Ryan Bennett uh, at fullbacks, or Reese Bennett actually. Uh, they've got Boyd and Reed in the in the centre uh, midfield. They've got I don't even know how to pronounce his name. Let's just go with Sammy at number ten. And they've got uh, Isa and Tony up top. Um, decent starting eleven. Don't know many of them. I'd be lying if I said I did. I do know this Thompson, who's on the bench. Yep, Nathan Thompson, and maybe a couple of others. I'm not too sure. But yeah, let's just go straight into the game. Okay, and we've kicked off. So uh, let's let's see what what this team can do. We've got a couple of youngsters on the pitch, but we also have a couple of experienced heads in. Uh, Bruno Fernandes and uh, David De Gea and you could even see Mark Rashford to be honest with you so yeah uh, let's see what we what we can do I expect to win the game you know not trying to be cocky but it is only a friendly and we are playing uh, a team that's a lot lower than us but yeah should be alright Scott McTominay looks like he's injured uh, I think he'll be alright through it should be okay um, also guys, I wanted to hear your thoughts on this series so far, you know, uh, tell me what, what you think of it, if you think, you know, it's been it's been quite fun, you know, you've been enjoying it, or let me know if it's boring and, you know, you just want me to change it up a bit, it's up to you. Oh, and free kick to Manchester United, shame we couldn't do anything with it. Diogo lot runs down the wing, whips it in, oh, unlucky. I just wanted to say, um, you know, I've been quite enjoying the series so far. I've been I've been off YouTube for a while, but uh, came back. I've come back and I'm enjoying it at the moment. And uh, unlucky Marcus Rashford. But yeah, you know, how's everyone doing? You know, let me know in the comments how you're all doing with this. You know, we're all in a global pandemic at the moment with COVID-19. But you know, we, we all get through this. Hope you're all coping. Hope you're all well. And uh, yeah, let's let's hope that we all get out of this. Uh, confinement <laughs> as soon as possible oh there we go Marcus Rashford from Bruno Fernandes so Diego Dalot runs down the wing whips it in oh no he doesn't pass it Tahi Chong who pass it Bruno Fernandes who whips it in and then on uh, Marcus Rashford's noggin so good goal uh, great start let's let's uh, see what the rest of the match has to hold And here is the second goal by Manchester United. So uh, Scott McTominay running, running down the wing, passes it into Marcus Rashford, who passes it into Martial, who passes it. Who McTominay has a shot, deflects off the keeper, and Martial finishes it. Proper poachers finish um, off a mistake from the goalkeeper, but you know what? Not, uh, not much you can do there. And Diogo Dalot's injured himself. Um, we haven't got any right backs on the bench, so uh, he's got, might have to play through it. But I think he'll, I think he'll get through it in the end. Should be fine. Oh, good goal by Bruno Fernandez. So uh, James Garner passes it through balls it into Marcus Rashford, who just whips it in, and a nice finish, simple finish from Bruno Fernandez. That's good. See, we're starting to pick it up now. We've had lots of shots and now we're starting to convert them. But bloody hell, we've had 21 shots to their zero. We are 
dominating in this game, but there's not much else you would expect really from, from a game like this. To be honest, I would have thought we would have had more goals at this point in the game. Okay, and that is the end of the first half. So, um, our 21 shots to their zero. We've had nine on target. They've, again, had zero. Uh, we've conceded three fouls to their four. Uh, one yellow card apiece. And we've got a lot more possession than them. It's what I'd expect at half time. You know, let's see if we can go into the second half and, uh, you know, carry on, carry on firing them in. And we've started the second half. So they've made a lot of substitutions. We shall be making some in due course. So, uh, I just want to, you know, give give the boys a slightly longer run out obviously we are having some having uh, some debuts or maybe not debuts but we are playing a lot of younger players so uh, we'll give them a slightly longer run out and then we shall make some substitutions okay and these are the substitutions we shall be making so I've taken off Martial for Mason Greenwood um, Marcus Rashford off for Angel Gomez and Tahi Chong off for Jesse Lingard changed the formation up a bit I brought on Juan Mata for um, for James Garner I brought on Luke Shaw for Dalot as he was injured and he has played uh, almost every game so far and I've just chucked Brandon Williams on the right. That's all the substitutions we shall be making for the time being but uh, if we need to make any more then I will do. I'm intrigued to see what um, Angel Gomez will do in this game as we haven't really seen a lot of him in real life uh, with Manchester United. Oli's given chances to a lot of youngsters. I think maybe he's given the most chances in the whole uh, Premier League. So yeah, and we haven't seen a lot of uh, Angel Gomez, so it leads me to think, you know, maybe we're not, he's not as good as all the Manchester United fans think, but you know, he has had a couple of uh, contract issues, maybe it's been that, I'm not too sure, but let's see what he can at least do in the game, if you know, if he is, if he is what we all think he is, you know, a brilliant talent with lots of potential. Oh, and there we go, Victor Lindelof has just been sent off. Bloody hell. <sighs> oh, and Trans Ame is on a yellow card. So what was the need? It's bloody, um, it's, it's bloody pre-season, Victor. Come on, you're better than that. Not much else we can do, really. Uh, I think I'm going to take off Bruno Fernandes. Bring on, um, Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire can just drop that centre-back. And, uh, looks like Bruno Fernandes, uh, Scott McTominay is going to be the holding midfielder so I will put him on defensive in a ball winning midfielder position so uh, it's now the I'm guessing it's a 4-1-1 four, 4-1-2-1-1 one, one, four, one, 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 I guess uh, but yeah let's see let's see how it goes oh and we've got an injury now they are, this is all going wrong everything's going wrong <laughs> it's just a pre-season boys come on Looks like Jesse Lingard is coming off for Dan James. Uh, not much we can do here. I just hope no one else gets injured. But actually, while I'm at it, I will swap Daniel James and Angel Gomez round. I think Daniel James is more comfortable off the left, and Angel Gomez is actually more comfortable off the right, I do think. But maybe I'm wrong, but it's my choice, so that's what I choose to do. Alright, boys, come on. Let's not, let's not let anyone else get a red card and try not to get injured. Oh, amazing green, we should have scored there. Unlucky, mate. We're going to the last five minutes of the game, and it looks like we are only going to win 3 0, which isn't a bad result, but you know, we, we've had a lot of shots which we should have converted by now. So, you know, I am slightly disappointed in that sense, but it's only a pre season game, and it doesn't really matter. And actually, Twins AB's picked up a knock. Bloody hell. You know, this game has been a right shitter, to be honest. Like, two injuries and a red card. Oh, it's not great. But the game has ended 3-0 to Manchester United. Uh, we've had 34 bloody shots to their three, and we've only we've only scored three. That is poor, boys. Come on. 11 shots on target to their two. We've conceded nine fouls to their five. Three yellow cards to their one. And we had a lot more possession than them. So there's not much else to say. It was a good result, but given the given the circumstances, we should have done much better. Okay, so it looks like Jesse Lingard will be out for three weeks, which is is you know it's not what I wanted. I don't really 
I don't really like this Lingard, but we do need someone in that right position at the moment, so we, he will be kind of missed, I guess. And Axel Transabi is only out for one to two days, which is great. That's fine. We can deal with that. So it looks like our next game uh, in the friendly tournament will be against Stoke City. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Ooh, Pogba developing concerns. I just wanted to let you know that Paul Pogba has been dropping hints about how appealing he finds the thought of playing in the Champions Cup and that I think he might be considering leaving the club. Ooh, you see, it's not just it's not just in real life, it's in the game too. Paul Pogba wants to leave Manchester United. <laughs> I don't think Paul is expecting anything from you at the moment, but it may be worth having a word with him. Try and sort it out for it becomes a bigger issue. See, now this is where... Uh, the game gets interesting for me because now it's very similar to real life. Do we keep Pogba or try and convince him to stay or do we just get rid of him? Um, let me try and you know, I'll discuss the issue with Pogba myself. Uh, you've seemed a bit down recently. Is there anything on your mind that I can help with? Uh, I'm really disappointed that we didn't qualify for the uh, European Champions Cup and I want to move to a team that can give me a level of competition I need. Oh, here we go, guys. Bit of drama bit of drama. Paul Pogba wants to uh, leave the club. See, what do what do we do to that now? Do we uh, try and persuade him to stay? Or do we let him go? Um, I've haven't a clue. Um, I think he's, he's obviously he's our best player in my opinion. He's the best one of the best um, midfielders in Europe. So even in the world to be honest with you. It would be a shame to see him go. In real life, I would like him to stay, but if he's going to have a fuss in the dressing room, then I think it's time for him to go. He's on big wages. We can we could sell him for a good price, get a lot of money for him, and bring in a replacement, I guess. Um, let me see what options I have. Okay, so after reading all the uh, answers, I do think I might let him... I think I'm going to let him go. But... Um, it will be sad to see him go, but I am gonna go. I'm gonna go with this one. So I'm gonna go. I appreciate your honesty and can understand your reasons, but I'll let you go if a team comes in with a reasonable bid. So if a team doesn't come in with a good price for him, then I'm not gonna sell him. Pretty much. Let's see what he says to that. Okay, I'm happy to agree that once um, how we've decided how big a bid will it take. So he's valued at 67 million, and United bought him for 80 million or 90 million. Um, for uh, a couple summers ago, and I'm not really looking at a loss. So what I'm thinking is, I'm thinking to go for about, I don't know, about, about I want to say a hundred million. Let's see what he says. Let's let's see what. Uh, maybe not hundred, maybe a bit more than that. I'm thinking maybe a hundred fifteen million. He's the best midfielder in the world, buddy. I'll see what he says. Uh, I thought you said a reasonable bid. That's too high and you know it. Let's be sensible here. Oh, you think that's too high for himself. Let me go with... I'll say... I'll say 95 million. Oh, he's getting a bit annoyed now. Okay, mm, let's go 90 million. That's, the, that's as low as I'm literally going to go. In real life, if we sold Pogba for uh, less than 90 million, I'd be furious. Okay, that's cool. That's fine. Okay, so it looks like I'm gonna have to um, let me. I'm, it looks like I'm gonna have to uh, you know, uh, set him uh, like offer him to clubs, offer him to clubs for ninety million. Uh, I'll offer it now and see what comes of it. So PSG have made an offer for Paul Pogba. They've made an offer of fifty-four million. Are you taking the piss? <laughs> um, yeah, I genuinely believe that they're trying to take the piss. Mate, I'll give 90 million straight up, you know. That's as low as I'm willing to sell him for. 58 million, now they're honestly... I don't even know if I want to sell to them. They're, they're trying to take me for an absolute dickhead. <laughs> Let's go with 88 million. Why not? Additional fees after um, appearances. Actually, no, we'll go with players to exchange. Ooh. Could we grab one of their players? 
Let me see. Is there anyone from their squad that I would like to bring in? See, this is this changes everything, you see. Because if I could find a good replacement from PSG, then do I need that much money? See, Julian Draxler was a player we were thinking of bringing in. But now that we have Admiral I we don't need him. Um, I would like Mbappe, but it's unrealistic at this point in time. Um... We sold Ander Herrera, bloody hell, everyone knows I wanted to keep him. I love Ander Herrera to bits. He was probably my favourite player at United before he left. But I think we're... Oh, Verratti. See, this is interesting now. If we grab Verratti, then I think we don't need to buy a replacement. Let me go with Verratti and see what they see what they say. If I go with exchange player with Verratti, and we go with hmm, let's go with I think I think honestly forty let's go forty eight million plus Verratti. I think it's a fair deal, and they aren't gonna go for any. They don't want to get rid of Verratti. And they're only going for 60, 65 million in the end, which I think is a joke, so I'm going to reject it. It's too low, and I'm, I don't have to sell him if I don't want to. But yeah, I think this is where we're going to end the episode, guys. Um, we're going to end it here. We didn't get too much done. We brought in Adam Montreore. Um Looks like we're going to let Paul Pogba leave, and uh, we are furthering on in the friendly tournament. So yeah, I think that's where we're going to leave it, guys. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what you want to see from the series, if you're enjoying it, all that stuff. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. And peace.